going on, y'all? So, preachers' daughters. Um, I don't know what season this show it premiered last night on Lifetime. I didn't really watch the whole thing because I was flipping back and forth between that and the movie. So, I mean, this is not a review. This is kind of more like a rant. Let me tell y'all something. I <clears throat> I don't I don't feel like this show is good for TV. I feel like it puts a bad taste in people's mouth when it comes to preacher children. Like, I know a lot of y'all have heard or even used the statement, you know, preacher children are the worst. And I feel like this show kind of justifies that statement a little bit. Now, me personally, I don't believe that preacher children are the worst. I feel like preacher children are, are the same as what, you know, quote unquote, normal children or regular children. The only difference is when you're a pastor child or any kind of preacher child, whether you're an apostle child or a prophet child or minister child or whatever, when you're a preacher, when your daddy is a preacher, yo, people know who you are. Your, your, your life is in the spotlight, so to speak. Everybody is watching you, you know. I've often heard a lot of pastor's kids say, you know, that are grown now. They say it was hard because being a pastor's kid, you kind of had to be perfect. You couldn't make mistakes because you would be judged for it. You had to kind of be like somewhat of an example to, uh, to other young people. And, you know, I mean, I feel like, <clears throat> and not even just being a pastor, I feel like any kind of position, I mean, and not just being a pastor's child, even like being the president of the United States child or being the senator's child or the governor's child or anybody, you know, who your parents in the spotlight, being Beyonce and Jay-Z's child, if Blue Ivy grow up and start acting the fool, yeah, they they gonna be coming for her. But anyway, I just feel like, like I said, this show, I do not feel like this show represents pastors' children well. Just like I don't that show that had the preachers, the first ladies up there. That show didn't present them in a positive light. It was a bunch of drama and being catty and tit for tat and stuff like that. But I guess that show didn't have enough drama because it got canceled. I, the preachers of L.A. That show really doesn't present preachers in a positive way and I think that's one and one thing I will say is this that you, and it's kind of hard to say, well let me just say this I've heard people say that that show gives them another reason not to go to church and which is a shame because not all pastors are like that not all pastors are money hungry not all pastors are bragging about what they have you know not all pastors are childish and catty the way they were um i will say this i don't have an issue with pastors living in nice houses my issue comes in when you taking money from the church and using it to, to get the stuff you have i'm not saying that that's what they do i'm not saying that ain't, that ain't what they're doing because i don't know their personal lives but what, that's what i'm saying you know one thing i don't agree with people saying about people what they say about the pastor living these lavish lives and they members is poor. First of all, more than likely the members that's giving living poor just because they're giving all their money to the church. Why would you give all your money to the church knowing you got your own bills and stuff to pay? That's your own. I feel like that's your own issue if you giving all your money to the church and you and you and you poor about to get put out your house and then you want to come. Now I will say this. If you are giving your money, to, giving all your money to the church, you ought to be able to go to the church and ask for help. Like I knew a mother, a mother that's in my church now, the church that she was at before, she was giving all her money to the church. What? Oh, that's 700 Club. But anyway, she was giving all her money to the church. And when she had needed a bill paid or something, she would come to them and ask for help. They wouldn't help her. Now, because there are some people, and that's one thing. That's why it's important to know the word of God for yourself because even though, because sometimes what will happen is these pastors and preachers, they'll come and try to twist the word and make you feel like you have to give all your money to the church when that's not the case. I mean, you pay your tithe, you pay your offerings, you know, when they have like seed offerings and stuff like that. That's different with just giving all your money to the church. You better get out of here with that. Anyway, back to the preacher's children. That, sh that show is trash. Like, I don't even know the names. I know one of the black girls' name was Tori. She was, was it Tori? Well, she's a black girl because they were on the Bethany show, which got canceled, no shade, but I'm just saying. And she was basically, basic, hold on. Basically, 
The biggest issue with her is she likes to drink. She goes out and drinks and parties. And one thing I did notice that she, what she said, and I felt like that was very hypocritical. She said she lives, basically she's saved in the church. And then when she out of church, she gets, she's buck wild. And I feel like that's very hypocritical. When you live, when the life you live in, in church is not the same life you live outside the church. To me, that's a hypocrite. You know, and a lot of people was coming at her saying, how are you supposed to be a pastor child? How do you do this? You know, she for one thing she tried to say is, I don't have to answer to them. They don't have a heaven or hell to put me in. Now, I will say this. They don't have a heaven or hell to put you in, but at the end of the day, God is going to judge you for not honoring your parents and not respecting their rules, especially when you st she's still living in their house. Like, because you're 21, that don't make a difference. If you're still living in their house, you're supposed to abide by their rules. I'm just saying. And my thing is, if you don't have the answers in last night's episode, like, if you don't have the answers to your parents, why you got scared when your daddy rolled past and saw you sit on the side of the street with a drink in your hand? Oh, all right. But anyway, I was just... And then, while I'm on that, while I'm talking about her, why are you going to go out on Saturday night and party knowing you got to get up and go to church the next day? And then you got to go to church with a hangover girl? By You can go to... Well... I'm not, all I'm saying is you could have went out on Friday night and stayed in on Saturday. Or either you could have went out on Saturday and just came in early or not drank. But anyway, I was just confused. Like, now I will say that some, I mean, and I'm not trying to say that they're bad parents. Because a parent can raise their child in the fear of the Lord, can teach them everything there is about God. But at the end of the day, when they it's up to them whether or not they want to continue on that path or whether or not they want to stray however like i said i don't care how old you are when you still living at home you going even if you ain't say even if you ain't say for real you're gonna act like you save as long as you're in my house when you move out and can pay your own bills then you can do what you want to do so but i think her name was tori and then you had it's four families on the show, but for some reason, I can only remember two of them. And then there was another family. It's a family of four girls. Um, and then the mom and daddy is divorced. Basically, um, the mom has a radio show. He, basically, the long story is the father, like each child, whenever they go off to college, they have to, in order for the father to help them out with their tuition, they have to do a year of ministry. Before he had to pay for their college. Now, first of all, like, and the mom basically was like, she don't really like uh, agree with that. But I mean, they're divorced and they have different parenting styles anyway. What I will say is, I I don't really, I don't see nothing wrong with you having your children to do a year of ministry at the high school. If if they want to continue in the ministry, but I mean, you can't force somebody to be in ministry because one thing, when it comes to God. When you know whether you singing or ushering or whatever, if you're not if you're not doing that job with a, a cheerful heart, you're not doing it because you want to do it, but you're doing it because somebody made you do it. But you really don't want to do it. God is not honored. God is not gonna bless that. He's not honored with that. So if the if the girls are going into a year of ministry and because daddy because daddy is making them do it so he can pay for college, that's worth that's pointless, especially. If they don't plan on being in the ministry, if they're not going to school for ministry or, you know, planning on doing anything in the ministry after college, I'm, I don't really understand it. Like, I just don't agree with that. And then, why they can't apply for scholarships or why they can't get fined with, with her mama running a radio show, she, they might say she make too much money. But why they can't apply for scholarships? Like, I, I don't understand that. It's just a whole... A, man, really... This show is most of the girls, and then why they don't? Well, it's called Preacher Daughter. Never mind. I was about to say something real dumb. I was about to say why they don't show people that got sons, but it's Preacher's Daughters. And I wouldn't be surprised if they came out with a preacher, a preacher sons show. Like I, I just, I wonder how much people get paid to do these shows. I like because I honestly feel like shows like this, this show. What was the first lady show? Sister Wise, Preachers of L.A. And speaking of that, well, that comes back on in October, so I will be reviewing that. But anyway, um, 
I've, I heard they were supposed to have been coming out with like a show in Dallas and something else. So I wouldn't be surprised. And I wouldn't be surprised if Bishop T.D. Jakes would be on the one in Dallas after he was throwing shade at them in the pool. And why is Bethany coming on? I thought that show was canceled. But anyway, um, like I feel like these shows, even Mary Mary, like I love Mary Mary. I'm a huge fan of Mary Mary. You know, I support their music. I've been, like I said in my review, I've been following them since day one when they stepped on the scene with Shackles. When Erica used to wear the micro braids and Tina used to wear the kinky afro. But even that show, even the Shears, like I feel like, I mean, I, I, I'm, I okay, I'm kind of on the fence because I feel like on one end, these shows kind of let people see that even though you are Christian, you still deal with everyday life issues. You're not perfect. Your life is not perfect. You still go through trials and tribulations. You get upset sometimes. Sometimes you say stuff that you don't mean. Sometimes you say stuff that you do mean. You got to go back and apologize for it. I mean, you know, but on the other hand, it's kind of like it's giving another it's giving people another reason not to want to go to church. It's giving people another reason to look at Christians as hypocrites. Now, first of all, and why is it that people when you see a Christian act one type of way, you generalize all Christians that way? Like when I was talking about like when I think about people that get hurt in the church, maybe somebody talked about them or mistreated them, then they just decide I don't want to go to church no more. Like just because that one church do you that way. All churches are not like that. Just because one Christian might have told you off or said something you didn't like or hurt your feelings. Not all Christians are like that. And I and I hate that when people watch these type of shows, they generalize all pastors or all preachers' children or all first ladies or all Christians, period, the same way. All of us ain't like that. I'm not. Now, I am the type of person where, you know, I say what's on my mind. I say how I feel. But I don't. I'm not a pop-off type of person, you know. Or in, a get up in your face type of person, you know. I can tell you how I feel and still be Christian about it. Okay. But anyway, um, that's pretty much all I want to say. Like I said, this wasn't a review; it was just a rant. But um, and I was just thinking, somebody like I know might be this, might be Bondi Blue, Tasha. I think I know might be Bondi Bondi Blue, some more love, and Ashley Villa. They do have and have not DVDs and. Before, I didn't have that channel because I only had basic cable. And now the season's by the end. So, do y'all know, write me down, let me know, do y'all know if that's, if those, if the season one and season two, if, if I can get it on DVD so I can watch it before the next, because I know they will come out with another season. Because just, you know, by the reviews and the previews, I know they're going to have to do another season. So, I wonder, is it going to do another season? But anyway, that's pretty much all I want to say. I want to give a shout out to my new subscribers. Um, and make sure y'all, the one that just subscribed, go back and look at some of my old videos. I know a lot of times people have a tendency when they subscribe to a channel to only watch the videos from that point on now. But go back and watch my own videos. But anyway, my old videos. But anyway, until next time, YouTube, peace.